Hey, 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 everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost. How are y'all doing? This is Craft Chat, and this is a time where we all gather together, relax a little bit, make something super easy and mindless, <laughs> and uh, I answer your crafty questions, and um, we are, yes, going to be drawing another winner for the Scrappy Contest, and uh, so I am pulling from last week's comments from Friday's craft chat. All you had to do was put a comment in the uh, craft chat video and that automatically enters you into this week's drawing. And the same is going to happen for next week's drawing. So if you want to get entered into next week's drawing, just leave a comment on this week's video. That's it. Trying to keep it super simple. And um, here we go. Okay, so let us, oh, what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, I believe on Wednesday I had a video showing um, how to, how to basically how to mass make journal cards using the masterboard collage Pam version of that. <laughs> uh, we all know that's always a little odd, but um, uh, yeah, I actually, I had so much fun doing that. I'm going to be making more masterboards today while we, uh, we sit here and do this because um, I still have a lot of scraps. And I, I see great purpose for them. And I, I honestly had so much fun doing it. I thought to myself, as soon as I got done that, I, I just want to go back and make, make uh, like a million of those things. Because you can use these things for so many things. Book covers, uh, notebook covers, uh, little journalette covers, uh, uh, matchbook covers uh, for junk journals, bookmarks, journal cards, journal tags, pockets, tacks, you name it. They can be used for anything. Okay, so basically I took a manila folder and cut it into two pieces. So actually this time old smarty pants here is going to put any wordage on the inside that I'm going to cover. Eh? Eh? Leveling up my uh, approach there. And I think I'm just going to get rid of this whole wonky piece. Goodbye wonky piece of wonky piece. Yes, because we we decided that fussing with you ain't worth it. No, okay, there we go. All right, we have that. That's good. We might as well just trim this up, one up, and let's get right to your first question. Alana Pettit asks, any chance of posting to the UK? Oh, she spotted I just um, put a surprise quickie video up. It was only like a two and a half minute video. Um, I, do you remember those Rolodexes that we made uh, to stuff and put ephemera and digikit pictures and printable images and things like that in? Well, I had made two of those, right? And I thought, oh, wait, uh, you know, why don't I stuff them? Why don't I stuff them? And so that's what I did. I um, loaded them with ephemera and then I loaded them with um, digikits. And I just stuffed them until they wouldn't physically hold anymore. And I just thought, let me just sneak them into my Etsy shot. And then I thought, well, maybe people aren't going to really understand what they are. So I made a teeny tiny little video, which I snuck onto YouTube. But no, it was like a, it was a random time. There was no warning, not much. And the only thing I could think of to do at the time was to put a little note in my um, YouTube channel pages community tab. Uh, you know, kind of where I update, like, here's Holly, here's, here's, you know, what's going on, that kind of stuff. And uh, I just put, hey, by the way, I just popped something up into my Etsy shop. And as I'm typing and punching that in, I look in my Etsy shop and they were sold. So um, thank you very much to those of you who bought them. I only made two and they sold right away. So thank you. I appreciate that very much. And um, what I think I'm going to be doing moving forward since we this is the holiday season, you know, we're going into the holiday season. Um... I might do other things like that because number one, it's, it's, um, it's, a, I, I don't know. I just think that people might be interested in, um, junk journal related gifts for this holiday season. And maybe, um, I guess what I'm saying is they may not necessarily have official videos at my normal time. They may not even have videos. They may just appear in my Etsy shop. Really, that's what I'm saying. Um, I may do some videos. Um, I do have a junk journal that's not quite finished yet, but it will be coming soon. And I probably will do a flip through video of that one. Um, but I have a, I actually have a lot of projects around here that I would like to um, uh, set free to the universe. And uh, so you may be seeing several of these things come through. Now, I, that's it for the Rolodexes. I won't be making any more of those, at least not this year. Um, but I do want to ha try my hand at making um, different things, and all junk journal related. But, um, um, and I'm also maybe, I haven't committed to this yet, but I may be going into my 
coffee table trunk thing and pulling out some of my older ones. I don't know yet. I don't know. Not sure. I have to reassess that. Yeah, just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I get nervous every time I think about going in there. But um, yes, I have a grant. Oh, I know. I, there's definitely one project I want to do. And I'm going to try and make a bunch. So there's a bunch for folks to buy. Uh, but that'll take me a little bit of organizing and everything. Um, so I'll be working on that in the next week or so. Uh, so that could come up anytime. Just just be prepared. That's all I'm saying. Just, just you know, if you're interested in those types of things, um, I've got some fun things coming your way. Okay, so the next question. Brooke Matthews says, how great is that? She was referring to the Rolodex. As soon as it hits the shop, it doesn't last 10 minutes. I don't even think it lasted 10 minutes, but, you know... Thank you. Very, all I can say is thank you very much for those of you who purchased. I truly appreciate it. Truly appreciate the business. Um, AJ's Inspired Life. Oh, I, this is a good question. She says, okay, question. <coughs> she asks, uh, now she was actually looking at the video called Can This Be Saved? An Abandoned Junk Journal Disaster. Um, how do you, and, and I ended up making a happy mail address. Where is it? I really like it actually, and I oh I wanted to update you guys. See, this is like my my this is like housekeeping. I should just call this um, instead of craft shot. I'll call it housekeeping. Like all the little things I want to tell you. Um, I I made this. It's kind of out of a half of a Rolodex thing that I made, and what I thought was I was going to put these um, labels down here and then write down. Oops, that's a fake one. Okay, that's Sally Pants at one one two three Paper Pile Road. Uh, but I was going to put people's write their addresses in here. But then, but then I thought instead of taking the time to laboriously stick all these things down, which half stick anyway. Let's face it, even though I glued them, um, I'm just going to cut out the return address and glue it onto here. That way I can use the book page as the pretty background. I don't need to have, I don't feel compelled to cover it up or anything, but I can keep people's return addresses here, one after another. And um, I don't know, this thing just, I love this thing. <laughs> That's strange. I, I love my own stuff. Um, there's just something about the feel of this. I don't know. I don't know. It's just got the best feel to it. It's made out of a, a file folder cover and just a bunch of folded book gut pages. But let me tell you, that was just, I don't know. I really like that thing. Um, I highly recommend you make one of those. Um, there we go. There was that. Okay. And then her second question was, oh, like receiving happy mail and sending something back. Um, or, or do you? That is the hardest for me. Thanks. Okay. So in all pure intentions, when somebody does send me something with happy mail, I do make a vigilant attempt to return something to the person because I think that if the person sent me something that was very kind and sweet and they took the time, the energy and effort to do that, and I like to respond accordingly, um, I wish I could respond with the magnitude with what people send me because... Um, it's flabbergasting sometimes, uh, and I can see the effort and the energy um, that people put into the, even, and it doesn't even matter if it's something little or big, or that, I just, the fact that somebody sat down and thought enough to write a note and tuck something into the mail is very sweet, and uh, I'm very moved by that. So I do um, uh, attempt to respond uh, in some way, shape, or form. I'm not always able to respond by mail. Sometimes I respond by email, uh, but I always make the attempt. Now, initially, um, what I tried to do was I would gather them up and then they would batch them. Okay. And then I would get, okay. But what I found, I got confused <laughs> yeah, and that's very dangerous. You don't want to do that. Um, it's better to, as soon as you get it, respond immediately. Yes. For me, because otherwise, and I have made a big faux pas with this before I tucked something somewhere and somebody sent me something very beautiful and I could not find their return address or their name, and I was mortified. And I know, I know to this day, I because I never put those addresses anywhere randomly because they're purposeful, and I, I said, okay, now I'm going to put this here so I know where I put it, and I, can't find, I couldn't find it. And I tore my place apart uh, three times, actually, and I could not find it, and I know it's still here somewhere, and I'm going to find it one day. But thankfully, the woman did reach out to me, and uh, so if you sent me something and I didn't respond, please throw like a clunk my way and let me know because m maybe Dumkoff here put the thing somewhere and doesn't realize where she put it. But I want to definitely reach out to you and uh, thank you for, for the things you send me. So 
my intent is to um, stay connected with fellow paper lovers. I love that. I love that about you guys, that you guys get it about paper and how much fun it is. So um, thank you for that. Okay, so that was that was the question. Okay, we're doing pretty good here. Okay, let me, let me put hearts on these so I don't re-ask them because I have a way of doing that. Okay, um, next question. Wendy Do asks... Um, this is regarding the video called Junk Journal Craft Chat. Oh, it was last week's Craft Chat. Okay. Hi, Pam. I love your videos and plan on catching up soon on your podcast when I have a chance. As a beginner on a tight budget, I really appreciate your tips and tricks. Is there a free font that can be used to look like typewritten words? Yes. Yes, there is. And there's many, actually. If you look up... Um, uh, the one I use uh, for my, my... When you see me write the paper outpost and, and words on my... Um, videos and things like that. I use something called um, My Underwood. And Underwood is a brand of old typewriter. It's probably still a current brand of typewriter. Do they still make typewriters? I don't know. Um, but yes, and actually when I looked it up, there are tons of free um, type old typewriter font types. And you can look them up. I think there's one called 1942. There's, um, there's a whole bunch. I mean, just Google it and you'll find zillions. Now, anytime you see something that says free something, but did anybody watch the social dilemma? Dilemma, you're the product. Just know that, that you're the product. Yeah. So basically nothing's free. And if you ask for something that's free, <laughs> then you're the product, meaning um, they capture your email address, they capture something, in or and the next thing you know, there you go. You know, you're in the system. Uh, but this is nothing new. I mean, let's face it, marketing has been doing this uh, for a long time. But let's face it, I, I send out a free monthly email newsletter, um, and uh, I send you, a, you know, you get a free digital image, free checklist of supplies, note from the bookmaker, page list of ideas. Um, but I get your email address and that's called marketing. Okay, there you go. It's honest. That, that, that is what it is. Okay. Um, so it's an exchange, but it's a, a, it's a knowledge filled awareness exchange. Like you are understanding when you go in there that you have to agree to do it and that you're okay with that. And if, like next Wednesday, you wake up and you say, I am not okay with this anymore, Pam. I want my email address back. Go away. At the bottom of every email uh, I send is the unsubscribe. And you can just unsubscribe yourself. Um, that's, that's, I don't, I'm not going to hold your emails hostage. I don't sell your emails. I don't, I don't data mine your emails. I don't give them to anybody else or anything like that. I have, I have no interest in doing that whatsoever. Um, uh, but I think it's a nice way for us to all stay connected and um, uh, just kind of a fun way for us to communicate other than regular old YouTube and podcasts and social media and things like that. Um, plus, it's also a way that I can reach out to people who take the effort to sign up the, for the email. You know, maybe they're going to receive a special offer or a special um, something. I don't know. You never know. Just every once in a while, I may do a special something with the email. Um, so I guess that's, that's how that works. Um, Okay, um, I'm not telling you, you guys already know this, you're, you're, you're well-versed, well-versed folk. Um, Bridget Haig says, is the gilding wax you are using the same as gilding wax for furniture? I believe so, because back in the day when there was only rub and buff, rub and buff I believe was originally for furniture, and somehow the junk journal world and the crafter world and the mixed media world got that little bottle do I have one? You guys, you guys remember that stuff, right? Um, let me look. Oh, yep, we got some here. Here, let me show you. This stuff. Rub and buff. This was, you could find this in Walmart anywhere. You could probably still find it there today. I'm pretty sure you can find it in, in Home Depot. I think that's where I got this. It's made by the American Art Clay? Clay Company? Maybe. Um, oh, man, look how small that writing is. Who on earth and their mother would write this small? Really? What is that? Or it's flammable, I can tell you that. But it is pretty, and it lasts a long time. Sometimes it goes a little funky or a little oily. Let's see, does it say? Is it just for furniture? Do not store. Use immediately smoke. I don't even know what it says on here exactly what it's for. Does it say in the front? Flammable. Apply to most surfaces. Polish with cloth. Clean with mineral spirits. Yeah, so it's cut by a waxy, oily base because it's a wax metallic finish. So this is, well, 
Yeah, this is old. Let's see what it looks like. It might look. Oh, it doesn't look bad. Let me show you. Not bad. Yeah. So, um, yeah, good old Rub and Buff was the originator in my world. That was the the one that I first came across many many years ago before I, I had any idea what I was doing. Yeah, I have to laugh in here because here's makeup with sparkly mica in it. You know, I mean, I thought, hey, hey, that looks like something we could craft with, doesn't it? I don't know. You know, it's all a possibility. You know, Pam, you got to see, stop seeing the possibility in everything because you're going to drive yourself crazy. Oh, somebody spotted this stuff. And this stuff is available online. It looks like this stuff. This is my favorite, which they don't make anymore. Artsy Company. Something like that. My Artsy Company. They don't make it anymore. Why? Why? Um, this one was like, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks. So I did buy it because so, somebody was showing it to me. And um, it's a little moosey. You know what I mean? Like it's almost too, it, it, it will work. But I thought, it's a little moosey. You know what I mean? Like just, it's almost like whipped, whipped butter in there where to me, that means there's less wax and more moisture in this one. This is more like a little jar of wax with color in it. And, um, let's just, we've got to put this on something now. Let's, let's just smooch it. I mean, it does a good job. Oh no, it doesn't smell good at all. This stinks like, um, fake shoe leather. Yeah. That's what that smells like. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. I guess I should show you what it is. It's Mr. Pebo Getty. I think that means gold. King gold. Gilding wax. And there's the company. And you can buy it on Amazon. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It works fine. It just, it doesn't have the orange essential oil smell that I so loved with the other one. But it does stay well. I mean, look at that. I mean, I, you think it's going to rub off, but even with the heat of your finger, it barely moves. I mean, that stuff really grabs. You know, so those of you who are wondering if this, like, gilding stuff just wipes off, once it's dry, it almost just says, eh, like that, eh, it just grabs onto your papers. And, um, uh, yeah, I think you can use it on uh, furniture. Some of them get too dry. Okay, here's an example of way too dry. Okay, then there's the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, what, what is that? This is, this is like chalk or something. Oh. Well, what's that? I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'm, I'm waiting for some miracle to happen in here. Maybe I should pour olive oil in here and come back in seven years and see if it's softened. That's not paste wax. That's a rock. Who are we kidding? I bought a whole bunch of this stuff. Don't buy this stuff. I mean, I don't, I don't know. That's what you're going to end up with. There's probably something, some way to new packaging. Oh, look, they put new packaging on it. Yeah, that, that'll make it great. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Um, okay. This is the favorite artsy. We, we've heard me talk about that. This is number two, which is really, 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 really good. Pent Art Paste Wax Metallic. Not to be confused with Pent Art Antique Paste. Not as good. Better. Better. Uh, in my opinion. Better. Um, why? Why? I don't know why. why. Why did I say that? Um, well, they're, they're two different colors, so you can't really compare because of the colors, but... Uh, Antique paste or paste wax. Maybe they're the same thing and they just changed the name or something. I don't know, but I really like this one called paste wax. Oh yeah, there's my orange. Yeah, it's not exactly the exact orange. This is probably like a navel and maybe this is a tangerine. I don't know. <laughs> but um, it's still, it's good. We can live with it. We can work with it and we roll. We're not going to let that stop us. Okay, get over there. Okay. All right, I'm not making much progress here today, Pam. Oh, look how, look how far you've come. Look, you've really done a great job today. See, that's the nice thing is today is like very low pressure, so it really doesn't matter if I make anything or not, right? <laughs> okay, um, but if you want to, that's not the right piece. Let's just slap some glue down and make something. Let's just, let's just get started. Let's, I think that's a lot of what creating is, is you just, just gotta get the ball rolling. What am I working with? You guessed it, Scotch Create glue stick, permanent glue stick. This is my favorite glue stick. Still is, even though I've, I've uh, attempted to try the Amazon glue stick. Not as happy. It's this would be my, like my secondary, not as important um, glue stick for just for holding minimal little things. But if you want the big enchilada, yeah, get this one. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's my opinion. Um, every, everybody has their own favorites, and um, smell is a big thing when it comes to art. What is that? Um, 
because when you're working with substances, it would be very nice if they smelled nice. Um, and everybody has different personal tastes and opinions on what smells nice. I know, I know. And um, that can be tricky. I'm just gonna put down some old ledger here because I have some to use it up. And here's just some regular ledger. That's pretty, oh, that's too much the same. That's good. Oh, what are we gonna do with this? Okay, here's some old piano paper. And we'll put you down. It's a very big piece. Okay, that's all right. Just put it down. Uh, I did not do the abutment method. Now I'm deaf, left with my foldy uppies. Yep, now I got I to gotta deal with that. So I'm coming in with my big gun. I'll fold it back upon itself. Fold it down. I decided I'm going to address every foldy uppie as I go. I'm not going to leave it till the end because then things are too... I forget about some. That's the truth is I just forget there was a foldy uppie there and then I carry on and... There it is. Okay, I'm going to do the abutment where I, I don't overlap. I just abut. I like that it says 1905. Can you see? You can't see that from there. Can you see it? 1905 right there. 1905. Yeah, some of these papers are really old. They're kind of cool. Kind of cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, that's got the gold on it. That was kind of neat. Maybe you just go, let's fill in this. Let's just put it somewhere. Oh, get that there. Okay. And it's okay to hang off the edge because you can always trim. There we go. Oh, you can still see Office Max. We'll fix that. We'll fix that. We can come along with something like that and just plop that there. That would be perfect, actually. Let's just do that. Okay. That's not, we're not going any farther. We're just going to glue this down. It's going to be on top. It will be, um, it's not an abutment. Nope. Okay. It's all falling apart. That's okay. But that's the way these old papers do sometimes. And it's it's part of its charm. I think you got to be able, as a junk journaler, to embrace paper fracture, paper, like old papers. Um, somebody yelled at me once for um, sending him them old papers, and I thought maybe I didn't explain well enough what ephemera was because um, I think not everybody understands that old papers can be um, old old. <laughs> they can be old and brittle and sometimes they break when you fold them. And I know that it doesn't make everybody happy. Um, and I, I live in that, I understand where you're coming from. It's a pretty peach piece of paper, isn't it? Um, and that's okay. I get that because I, I know what it's like when you're making something. And let's say you use one as a um, signature page and it fractures. What I would recommend is mounting that page onto another page so that it gives it strength so you can maintain the integrity of that page because yes, over time, some of these pages are uh, degrading and they may not be as strong as their originals, but we as crafters um, find ways around that and we just learn how to adapt and um, bend and uh, still be able to, there's my neighbor. Hi, what are you doing with your dog, Rodney? He's time for a walk. I haven't heard him bark in a while. I'm worried. I haven't heard Rodney. Sonny, have you heard Rodney? No, oh, no, Rodney. I don't know what they did with Rodney. I think they got rid of Rodney. No, they didn't get rid of Rodney. They wouldn't do that. The wife loves Rodney. The husband, not so much. He's ready to get rid of the dog. But um, the wife, she's wanted a dog forever. And she was like coochie cooing over our Maltese for years. She's such a sweet lady. And uh, I hope they didn't get rid of Rodney. I don't think so, though. But I should, I should go ask him, hey, I haven't really heard from Rodney lately. What's going on? I'll be that, I'll be that neighbor. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so a little more glue there. And that's the thing is sometimes when you're working with um, this kind of glue, you have to go back and put a little more down because it dried. You know, it just dried on you. Yeah, you were snoozing. That's what happened. You were snoozing. And these things happen. That's what they do. Yeah, okay, so I think I'm going to have to... All right, I'm going to create a... Yeah, i got to get back in there right now. That's what I said, right? I'm going to go back in there right now and fix that. Put the glue on it now. Okay, there we go. No, no foldy uppies. Okay, let's see. What else do we have? Got a pile of stuff here. Oh, um, yeah. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of interesting things coming this fall, and uh, um, I'm very excited to share them with you, and um, I hope you find them interesting. Okay, so I have completed, completely, what is this? This is completely a foldy up. Who are we kidding? This is like, not, not enough glue. Get down there. There we go. Yep. 
No, that came off. That's all right. Um, now, I think he turned on some kind of pool equipment or something beside me. It's making a funny noise. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and trim this off because now we have a nice background, which we can do anything with. Okay, here we go. All right. Well, maybe I'll just do it the old-fashioned way and trim it. And in the meantime, I will ask another question. Uh-oh. Sierra. Oh. I thought I blocked you. Okay. No, we're going to block you. <laughs> How'd you get back in there? I don't know. Yeah. No. Uh, bye. Okay. Um, okay. Bridget Hayes asks... No, I, I, I just do her. Is the gilding wax you're using the same? Yes, I just answered that. Thank you. Diana Criswell. Hello, I tried to find a coffee dyed paper video to ask this question, but couldn't find one. I was wondering if you have ever tried to dye with hot chocolate. Oh my God, what a great idea. No, I've never tried that. And I, I love hot chocolate. So even if it didn't work, I'd be happy. You know what I mean? Um, that's a great idea, actually. I know um, you can add... Uh, like vanilla extract scent to your papers to give them a little bit of a vanilla scent when you're when you're dyeing things and also even if you don't have coffee if you like wet your papers and then bake them dry they will get a brownish color to them depending on how much you bake them um so let's say you don't like the smell of coffee because some people don't um you can still get a brownish colored paper now keep your eyes on your papers if you're baking them uh, bake them at a low heat and don't leave the room whatever you do because papers can ignite let's just say i've had a few ignitions in the oven now technically an oven should be a well-contained safe space so even if you have a fireball going on in there it shouldn't jump out of the oven and go anywhere it should be contained but you don't want that to happen at all. I don't want that to, for anybody to happen. Um, and it's a little scary. And, and then, so what you do is you go for very, very low temperatures. And you have to, everybody's oven is a little different. Um, so you gotta kind of test and just, and you also have to see how many pages deep you're okay with. So what happens? This is what happens. Okay, you, you take a pile of papers, I don't know, say 15 papers, and you stick them in the oven, all stacked up. You stick them in there and the, the oven's hot and then you're waiting. So what happens is the top paper and the bottom paper dry first, not always at the same time. The bottom paper may actually end up scorching before the top paper is even dry. So there's a lot of this going on. There's a lot of, hey, what's going on in there? And then lifting it up, checking underneath, maybe pulling out the bottom two pages, maybe the top two pages and letting it cook for a little longer. The other thing is um, divide and conquer. Um, you can take like one or two or three but like layers of paper, not 15, um, and then just put them on your racks. Or if you don't want the rack mark, you can put cookie sheets or tin foil or something down so that it's flat. I don't know if tin foil might make a mark too, but um, where the grill lines are. But I like the grill lines. Some people don't like the grill lines. I like the grill lines. Um, but uh, uh, the thinner the piles are, the faster they will dry. And then, but then if you have only one or like one or two sheets, you're opening and closing that door like every two seconds. Um, so it's a very active, participatory, you can't walk away, can't leave the room, can't take your eyes off it. Don't get distracted by the phone, the doorbell, your favorite show, your YouTube video, your podcast, nothing. You have to be focused, 100% focused on that oven and don't take your eyes off it. Um, if you are, are sincerely interested in uh, true copy dyeing of pages. Now, the other option, if you don't want to deal with any of that hoo-ha, you have options. Number one, don't stick them in the oven at all. Just air dry, air dry them. Just put them in small enough piles so that the top one will dry, and then you come along and you take off the top one, or you spread them out across the kitchen table and come out back the next morning and check to see where everybody is. Um, what I like to do sometimes is take a bunch of papers that have coffee dyed and I used to iron them. I used to laboriously iron them all and it was, it, it was quite a chore. And, uh, but then I found I would get very similar, not exact, but very similar results. If I took the entire stack and when I coffee dyed them, they were all dry and I piled them on top of each other, all nice and neat. And then I put a, um, 
wooden cutting board on top of them to flatten them all and then I took two cases of water and sat it on top of the wooden cutting board and um, it wouldn't take that long to flatten them maybe a couple hours but usually I just leave it to the next day and come back and they're all nice and flat so that's kind of a quickie way to do a whole bunch of them at once which which really helps and the other thing is you can just buy them from other people who make them because some people love to make these things and that's their thing you know and then you can you can buy them on Etsy um, probably on eBay and things like that there I have created one I have created one master board. I know, it's, it's mind-boggling at the, the, the lightning speed that I'm working at here today. Um, I think I'm going to put more on this. I feel like I... No, 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 I'm just going to leave the base. I'm just making bases. That's it. Just base day today. Today is base day. Hi, this is base day. Let's ask another question. Diana Krizel asks, Hello! No, that was hers. Um... So I hope that way. I would definitely try it and let us get back to us with the hot chocolate because that sounds fabulous. Um, the only thing I could think of, I would go for the hot chocolate without the sugar in it or maybe just use plain cocoa because I think sugar is an acid and that may eat up your papers a little bit faster with time because it's not going to be acid free. So, or, and you don't want ants, you know what I mean? So um, I would try the, um, just plain cocoa. I would go with plain cocoa and give it a go and let us know. Um, but yes, the vanilla extract will give a lovely, a lovely vanilla scent. And you can also add a little bit of essential oil if you want to do something like that. Just a little a couple drops here or there, lavender or something like that, if you think that might be something that you would enjoy. And uh, remember, you have no control over whether other people like scents. That's one thing I really had to learn in life uh, because I used to sell handmade soap. And um, it was the funniest thing watching people come along and pick up a bar of soap at the craft show. And I'd get different reactions to the same bar of soap from so many people. Somebody would be like, oh my gosh, heaven smells wonderful. Next one, oh, this is it reminds me of my grandfather. You know, I mean, it would just be so funny, the different reactions, because they say that the sense of smell is our most primitive and also uh, sense, and also um, it contains the most memories with it. So you will know immediately whether you have smelled something before. Like if you get a whiff of perfume or a whiff of, let's say, Mrs. Tarka's pierogies from when you were growing up in the back, you know, she lived behind you and they were amazing. And it's like a huge anchor for me. If I smell anything that smells like those pierogies that Mrs. Tarka used to make, I love you, Mrs. Tarka. And I, I loved your pierogies. Um, I mean, they just bring tears to my eyes. I, I, I don't know how to express it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> breathe, Pam, breathe. Um, uh, Kristen said, Hey, Fred from Alcatraz. <laughs> um, she's referring to the junk journal, fabric, paper, envelopes, and cards. Fun, pretty for junk journals. She said, Hey, Fred from Alcatraz. What kind of journal supplies do you find in there? Oh, that is funny. You know what? I think Fred from Alcatraz, whoever that is, must have been somebody I was referring to at some point. Um, there are craft supplies everywhere, and it doesn't matter whether you're in Alcatraz or you're staying at your, your cousin Sally's or you're just in the Dunkin' Donut shop. You look around for paper ephemera, and you just keep your eye. Remember, it's paper, like ephemera is supposed to be disposable paper, daily paper, like things that we use on a daily, like newspapers and um, napkins and coasters, paper coasters and uh, brochures and... New, um, uh, little flyers and things like that thing ads things that have ads on them that are meant to be read weekly and then dispersed and you know and let go things like that are the ephemera of today and they can make beautiful junk journal items um, even if they're from today they don't have to always be old um, I just kind of have a personal fascination with other times um, but that doesn't mean that's where all joy lives. No, 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 no. Because one day these will be the old times. I know, I know. Oh gosh, I had a funny, uh, I had a funny, uh, fortune cookie center. Yeah, it said, um, today when I was eating my, my, it was actually Thai food, but I don't know, but they had fortune cookies there. Um, and it said, um, an old broom always finds the dirt, or no, no, the, an old broom knows where the dirt is. And I thought, yep. And it was really kind of funny because it was um, the day that I was um, going through my closet and I was purging my closet. And uh, I, I thought to myself, oh my God, I'm the old broom. 
I am the old broom because I watched a hoarder episode and then I ran and cleaned my closet because those shows always freak me out and I'm thinking, I, I, I can't turn out like that. Please, dear God, don't let me end up that way. And then um, I run and I clean something <laughs> just to feel better. Does anybody else do that? Um, yeah, so I nine bags of... Nine bags of... Um, well, it was more than clothes. Okay, so there was the clothes, which was the obvious, but then there was what I call the above. So I have a couple shelves that float above the clothes, and I have these really cute little baskets all lined up. They look exactly the same, so it's, it looks very uniform, unique, and organized, and I had absolutely no idea what was in them. But at the time when I filled them, I thought those things needed a home and a purpose, and I realized that I had not gone into any one of those baskets in the last two or three years. So I was amassing this collection of he old heating pads. Um, what else did I put in there? Oh, a bunch of winter stuff. Man, I had the winter market corner. Now here I am in Sweatville, Florida, right? I had more winter items up there that, oh, it's nice. You know, I might go somewhere sometime. Of course, this was all before COVID and all that had, um, you know, stuff. Can I say that? Probably should. I'm not supposed to say that. I don't know. Whatever. Too late. Um, but, uh, um, I had all this stuff up there that was just packed away for years and I just did not use it at all. And it was, uh, taking up so much breathing room and I thought, I don't need this. You know, if I really haven't reached for it in that long, then it's probably okay to let go. You know, it probably is okay because if you said to me, Pam, who do you want to will and bequeath all your stuff to kind of thing? And I'd be like, okay, box number 42 in the closet, I bequeathed that to what was in that again? I can't remember. Yeah, let's give it to the cousin I don't like or something, you know? <laughs> because uh, I don't, it, it was like, it, it doesn't exist. If you don't know what is in those boxes, it doesn't exist. Now, I say that with great emphasis because I have things in my craft room like that. So I'm slowly getting, slowly getting towards, you know, you know organizing the craft room again yet again but uh, not there yet no not happening yet we just kind of did a couple you know attempts at that through the years and usually around the first of the year I'll, I'll do more of a serious attempt but uh, um, right now no not much progress in that department but the other areas in in the house are definitely getting a once-over which they have to have one too you know it can't just be all craft stuff no sometimes we have to just leave the craft stuff alone yeah we do okay I'm gonna have to go in there and fix that I can see that I've I've left the peely uppies, and I know exactly what's going to happen if I leave those. I'll forget they're there. Yeah, you get down. Okay, here you come on back up. Yeah, and you're down. Okay, enough of that. Um, okay, let's do another question. What time is it? Oh my goodness, we got to ask our we got to we got to pick a winner. We got to pick a winner. Winner chicken. Dig okay, we're gonna get, let we're gonna let Catherine get her question in here. Catherine Windsor. Uh, from last week's craft chat. She says, I love the fundal and digi kits I purchased from you, but being a history buff, I can't bring myself to destroy the pages in the fundal. I also have not been able to successfully create a journal worthy of using those lovely gifts, digi kits. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, can you suggest any ways to get past this creativity block? What is the best size for a journal and what are the easiest materials to cover it with? I don't have access to any books and almost never receive any mail. Um, I have a lot of podcasts that will help you find stuff that are um, easily accessible for you. But just right off the top of my head, I would say um, if you're having the trouble finding stuff, start at your local library and see if they have books that they're giving away. A lot of libraries will just give away books before they call the shredder to come and get the, sh the books. So those books are going to be shredded. If you do something with, if you don't, if you take that book home and you just put it on a shelf and never do anything with it again, and, um, um, Nobody ever looks in it, nobody reads it, nobody um, derives any joy from that book. It was probably better off going to the shredder because at least then it would be recycled into something that might make something nice like the padding and car seats or something like that, you know? So think, that's what I do to myself. I, re I realize, and, and this does not work in every case, I understand, but I say to myself, I'm giving these the page is an opportunity to be freed from this book so that they may go 
serve a greater purpose individually out there in the universe, whether they become a junk journal page or part of an embellishment. Maybe they're going to trigger somebody's emotion, um, imagination, that might inspire them to make something or create something with their own hands, which I think is a greater purpose than maybe just being closed on a bookshelf somewhere never to be read. So the book had a life all of its own initially. It led that life. We, we don't know from whence it came, what life it lived. Let's hope it was a good life. And maybe now it's time for life number two. Um, and then maybe there can be a few of those before it ever it meets the shredder. Um, it's just a perspective change when you realize that um, you're, you're saving it from a landfill or the shredder or maybe it's easier for a person to focus on one or two lines from a book than it is for an entire book. Um, the odds of a couple of lines being read might be greater than an entire book being read. Um, and I, there, that's the, pretty much how I kind of get around that. Um, so what she had something earlier on, but, but oh yeah, um, love the photos, but I can't bring myself to do it. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with, um, uh, keep, and especially if it's your first fundal or it's the first time you come across old, historic, and interesting papers. And I, I'm happy and thrilled and moved that you're seeing the joy and the value and, and honoring the papers that you have because I know you get it about their specialness. And um, I would say do what you feel comfortable with and keep your eyes open because the more you keep your eyes open, the more things you're going to come across, the more you're going to discuss um, your love of paper with other people and they may say, hey, I got a whole box of something over here that you might be interested in. Next thing you know, you've got a whole box to play with. And um, um, then it's going to be up to you to navigate the ebb and flow of things that come into your life because when you put on your junk journal binoculars on, everything is a craft supply. And that feeling like I don't get mail or I, I don't have anything, well, that'll start to disappear very quickly when you start to realize how many things you actually interact with on a daily basis that maybe you didn't even think about that could be put into a junk journal. Um, tags on clothes, um, packaging, uh, a lot of the things that, you know, if you get things from Amazon or, or the, the packing paper, things like that. Um, if anybody sends you postcards, maybe you've got a nice collection of old Christmas cards and you would like to put those in a junk journal, like just a, a junk journal that just contains your Christmas cards from 1996. And you can look back and see when, you know, Aunt Ethel sent you a nice note back when people actually used to write Christmas cards. Um, and things like that. So there's a way to house our items in the junk journal format that can honor these items in maybe more of an um, inviting, friendly way. So that, you know, like, you know, then your sister Sally comes over and you said, hey, you know what? I got these Christmas cards that I put into a junk journal uh, from 1996. You want to take a look? She's like, oh, yeah, there's Ellie like Aunt Margaret and Aunt Sally and Aunt Susan. And, and yeah, oh, I never liked that. Aunt. And, you know, and then you laugh and, and you, you giggle and you carry on. And uh, so it can, it, can be, it can be a nice experience. So I would say just keep your mind open. Keep watching everybody's videos. Uh, keep seeing what they do with it because one day, one day you're just going to be, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to gut a book. I'm going to do it. I'm going to use some of my precious pretties in my journal and I'm going to feel good about it. Dag nabbit, gall darn it. And it's going to be okay. It is it's going to be okay. Okay, let, now, now, I got totally sidetracked. It's all your fault. Um, we are now going to pick the grand scrappy contest winner. And this is going to be a big one. Yeah, this is going to be a big one. I had a lot of scraps this week, so okay, hang on. Hold on. Uh, uh, okay. I hope I don't accidentally turn it off. Okay, here we go. Let me put you back to YouTube random con. Oh, I didn't do the thing. Hang on. Okay, we have 311 comments. And we are ready to pick the raffle winner. Are you ready? One, two, three, go! Do you see your name? Do you see your name? Do you see your name? Oh, I see some names I recognize. Oh, Jessie Scott! Way to go, Jessie Scott! Um, congratulations. She asks, how many journals have you made? Um, over 500, I think, at this point. Uh, Jessie, hold on. Okay, back over here. Okay, Jesse Scott is the big winner of the Scrappy Contest of the Craft Chat of uh, this Friday. What's the date? The 21st, I think. Today? Is it? No? I don't know. I forget. Let me look. No, it's not the 21st. That was yesterday. No, let's forget it. Not even close. Okay, the official Craft Chat you guys are watching is on Friday, July 26th. Yes. So next, okay, Jesse. 
Jesse Scott, you have six days to get a hold of me by next Thursday. Um, if you get a hold of me by next Thursday, just uh, email me at Pam at the Paper Outpost and email me an address to mail your prize to, and I will get that off to you. And then we will have another drawing next week because apparently I still have scraps. Yes, and that's the way it goes. Okay. Um, so I, I think, oh, wait, okay. Well, we're going to wrap it up here, but you know who I'm going to get. All right. Come here, fluffers. Come here, buns. Okay. I, I, do you have, uh, you're prepared? Well, I'm, I'm sort of prepared. Yes, I'm very prepared. I'm totally, I am so, I got this, Mom put me on. Hi, everybody, it's Sunshine. And I would just like to say that today I had a dirty face. And Mom handled it. Yes. Do we know what it was? No. Do we want to know? No. Um, yeah, it was on my forehead. Yeah. And, um, I think it had something to do with when I was sticking my head in her bowl, and I was not supposed to do that, but I was. And this, it was really good. And it doesn't taste anything like my kibble. No, no, no. It had Rodney. Are you over there? Mom, I'm concerned about Rodney. I haven't seen or heard from him in days. We need to, like, send a flare or something. Um, I like her food better. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my face is clean. I love you all. Happy crafting. Bye. Sunshine here, signing off. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sunshine. Oh, yes, yes. Well, that should be the most difficult thing in the day. I think we're just gearing up for a big thunderstorm here. So I think we're going to sign off. But if you have not signed up for my free monthly email newsletter, um, <laughs> Um, go ahead and sign up for it. Why? Because you get a free digital image emailed to you every month, plus a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it, and um, a page list of ideas, and all sorts of other fun stuff like pe peeks at my new digi kits coming up, updates from me, and there will be more stuff soon added to the newsletter as soon as I get around to it. Okay, here we go. Now, I have strategic... Oh, look at it. This isn't even finished. Way to go, Pam. That's really impressive. Okay, but we did finish this one. Yeah, okay. We, we made one. All right, there we go. Um, that's the way it goes sometimes. You know what I mean? That's the way it goes sometimes. So, um, what else? It, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. New audio material on the other days of the week. You're going to find video podcasts, which can be listened to on any anywhere you listen to podcasts. But if you want to watch the video, check it out on Spotify. In my Etsy shop, you're going to find journals and bundles when I have them done. And my vintage digi kits, which are actually known as printables in the common um, vernacular. And uh, basically, those are images that you can print out. You get five pages each. They're themed and like birds, Victorian, shells, uh, celestial, um, tea time, baking and cooking, you name it. There's a whole bunch to pick from. And uh, you can make pockets and tucks and things like that out of them. They're a lot of fun. And I, ma I make fundles, which are collections of old and interesting paper, like antique ledger and uh, checks and postcards and receipts and music papers, dictionary pages, and a whole host of other things. 100 plus items, and I mail those off to you. And you get to feel all the different old historical papers and types of papers and find some really cool finds in there. If you're a historian or collector, you'll know what I mean. And um, I have a printed mail service. If you do not like to print printables, I will print those for you. I do those in batches of 10 digi kits. That means you're going to get 50 pages printed on lightweight cardstock. And uh, all I need from you is the names of the 10 digi kits you would like. You can email me that list to pam at thepaperoutpost.com or send it to me at Etsy message. And um, you don't need to buy the individual digi kits. It's a, just a flat fee and shipping is included, priority shipping. Um, I have an Amazon shop. If you're looking for favorite tools and supplies and things that you see me use here, if I can find the link, I will put it in there in my Amazon shop for you to check out. And um, I have a merchandise shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, uh, and you would like a nice gift for yourself or for a friend in the form of a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip tootie, a mug, a tote, something fun for the holidays, I got you covered. And uh, you, you can find me on Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges and seeing what you guys make from these videos. Uh, lots of inspiration, lots of fun. I had a few people who tell, told me recently they were scared to join initially because they were scared of Facebook. They finally did it, and they were so glad they did because they found it a very uh, friendly and welcome, welcoming and inspirational place. So thank you. I love get, getting that feedback, and I, I, that just makes me feel so good. Thank you. Um, remember, most of all, that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, and we'll see you next time everybody. Bye-bye.